So um, in the book, The Guide for the Perplexed, Maimonides does, does explain to us or tell us the origin of Abraham. And uh, he, he gives us this as a backdrop for what he teaches us about the laws that are found in the Old Testament of the Bible. Um, that backdrop itself was so interesting to me. Um, I've read the Bible. I wouldn't say I've read everything, but I've read it extensively. And I, I, I am aware of the stories that are in the Bible. And in particular, the story about Abraham. Um, of course, we know Abraham and his wife Sarah and, and the son and him trying to or being asked by God to sacrifice his son and all that. Um, Maimonides tells us about the origin of Abraham. Um, in the Bible, we, we, it does tell us where Abraham came from, I think from Ur or something like that. I might be wrong on that. But Maimonides, I don't know, he, he, he goes further and gives us more information from other sources that are not in the Bible, and in particular, he, he quotes one book uh, written by a tribe of the people to which Abraham apparently belonged to, and that is the Sabean people. Um, um, I'm going to talk more about the Sabean people in, 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 in a, the next two or three videos. Uh, the particular source that he quotes is a book titled The Nabatean Agriculture. And it seems like this is a book that um, this was a, a huge book. It seems like Maimonides did lead, read the book. It seems like it's a book that was an ancient text, most likely a text that is most likely um, was before the Bible. Uh, that's the, 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 the impression I got um, as, as Maimonides was describing it. Maybe that's not really the case, but the way he explained I got the impression that this book uh, was written way before the Bible, the Nabatean agriculture. And this book was written by a culture or a people uh, uh, who formed the tribe to which Abraham belonged or where Abraham came from. Um, so let's read. He says, Abraham was brought up in Kutha, and when he differed from the people and declared that there is a Mecca besides the sun, they raised certain objections and mentioned in the argument the evident and manifest actions of the sun in the universe. So Abraham was a member of the Sabaean tribe of people. And the Sabaean tribe of people apparently worshipped the stars and the sun as the main god and then the other stars as other gods. Uh, that was the basis of their religion. And at some point, uh, Abraham got like... Um, a revelation you can call it or he saw he came to the conclusion that the, the beliefs of his people were not uh, the right beliefs uh, he thought they were wrong in believing that the sun was a god and then the stars were other gods and then he started arguing with these people about this and my mind is right um uh, it is when abraham the pillar of the world appeared he became convinced that there is a spiritual divine being um uh, but the outer of the sphere, uh, I'll read that again. When Abraham, the pillar of the world, appeared, he became convinced that there is a spiritual divine being, which is not a body nor a force residing in a body, but is the outer of the spheres and the stars. And he saw the absurdity of the tales in which he had been brought up. So Abraham apparently, at some point, he, yeah, he was brought up in that belief of worshipping the sun and the moon and the stars. But at some point, he came to the conclusion that there must be a a more um, like there is a, a divine being that is not these things and these things are just uh, his creation. He therefore began to attack the beliefs of the Sabaeans, to expose the falsehood of their opinions and to proclaim publicly in the opposition to them. So he started kind of teaching against the teachings of the Sabaean. Um, uh, he, he became aggressive in that, telling them that whatever they were practicing was not uh, the right religion, you might say. Uh, he, was, he, he became aggressive in teaching about that. And Maimonides writes, in short, the king put him in prison, uh, but he continued many days while in prison to argue against them. So he, he continues teaching, giving these teachings that were against the, the, the laid down beliefs of the Sabaean uh, culture. And to so some extent, even the king himself became aware of this um, re rebellion, you might call it, and, and he put Abraham in prison. But Abraham continued still arguing against uh, the teachings of the Sabaeans. At last, the king was afraid that Abraham, this is my morning is writing, at last the king was afraid that Abraham might corrupt the kingdom and turn the people away from their religion. He therefore expelled Abraham 
into Syria after having deprived him of all his property. So the king decided that the best punishment to give um, Abraham is to take all his property away. But to save the kingdom from his teachings, he decided to send him away. And Abraham left uh, uh, the Sabaean country, if, if the Sabaean country, yes, and he went into Syria. Um, <clears throat> and, and my wife is tells us, this, this is the account which you find clearly stated in the book called the Nabataean Agriculture. So while we have these stories that are in the Bible, written in the Bible about Abraham, the Nabataeans or Sabaeans also did write their own version of what really happened, happens, happened between them and, and Abraham and how Abraham started t giving out these teachings or, or uh, teaching uh, these ideas that went against the, 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 the core religion of the Sabaean people. Uh, so he, he, Maimonides tells us that he read this book uh, as a translation that, that was done by somebody called Ibn Wasin, Wa, Washia. Ibn Washia is the one who had translated the, the Nabataean agriculture into, into Arabic, and that's how Maimonides was able to read this book. Apparently, this book is a very ancient book. Um, most likely, I think I've mentioned it uh, or I've not, that it's likely it's, it's more ancient than the Bible, likely, or they were written around it. Or even though the Bible itself is a book that, it's a collection of books, of course, and those books were written in a a time spread maybe thousands of years so so but the point i'm trying to make is the nabatean agriculture is a very ancient text i don't i tried looking around whether there is a, a, a an idea uh, there is a, a a copy of it still available maybe there is somewhere but i didn't see whether we have a text around which is likely there is one somewhere likely uh, but during the time of Maimonides, it turns out he, he did get a copy and read in arabic which was translated by someone um, now, the Sabaeans, I was trying to look around, the, the kingdom, their kingdom was uh, headquartered in what we know today, so southern Yemen, or Yemen in general. Um, and then another thing I found out, these people were very closely re related to the, to the um, modern day Ethiopians, if I, if yeah, something like that. The, and, and in fact, I read somewhere that if there is anything still remaining of the culture of, 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 of the Sabians, some of it can be still found in, in, in Tigray, in Ethiopia today, including the, the, the writings, how the, the Ethiopians write in Aram, Amaraic or Tigray. They still use the, the script that is a remnant from the uh, Sabian people. And as I was reading this book, I got a very, at least, even though very distant, but still it kind of like made sense. I've had people argue, oh, the Asian Jew are Africans. Um, this book kind of gave me the, the remotest um, uh, justification for that argument. I'm not saying that is the case because um, uh, I think Jewish as a race is a very complex um, 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 phenomenon. Like all, all races, of course, um, it has gone through so many um, transformations over, over thousands of years. It's the same for all uh, tribes of people. Uh, that identity has gone through a lot of, of, of transformation. Uh, but the thing is, uh, from this I saw the remotest justification that can be there for anyone who tries to argue that, oh, the ancient Egyptian, no, no the ancient Jewish or Africans, I've seen those arguments being made. Uh, sometimes they seemed absurd to me, but yeah, okay. If we are talking about Abraham being a Sabaean, Sabaeans being like the closest people to the Sabaeans we have today are the Ethiopians, okay. Maybe that argument can stand on that. So yeah, so Abraham was from the Sabaeans and he was, it seems like he reached a point and he started teaching. I, this became, I, I, when I was reading this part of this book, uh, I saw this parallel that Abraham at some point behaved like Jesus. Like Abraham was living in this society that had its own um, religion, beliefs, culture, and, and he decided to rebel against that, that and to teach something completely different. And because of that, he ran into problems with authorities and he was arrested, he was thrown into the prison and then he was expelled from his home and they took away his property, as Maimonides tells us. And then a few thousand years later, we have Jesus born into the Jewish um, culture and then he... He started teaching things that were kind of going against the core beliefs of his people. And then uh, he wasn't expelled, but he was killed, which is like this. 
this parallel there. Both were like rebels of their time. 